lovelies, this is Simsfell and welcome to episode 20 of The Sims Medieval, a final episode for season 1 of this series and damn, I opened the file to a very interesting sight. Looks like the attendants at this church are not as innocent as I thought they were. I thought Braxian was the only one doing all these terrible things but apparently not because we've got a forester who's on this interrogation chair getting interrogated and smacked over the head <laughs> with all these weird contraptions by attendant Dana. So, okay. And Praxian, shut up, Praxian. He's too cowardly to do anything. He's kind of just standing there smiling, saying, oh, I see what's going on, but I'm not going to stop it because I got to do the exact same thing. Look at this. He just got out and he's back in that chair. Honey. I realize I mean, her hair color is terrible. I hate that. It's like a disgusting, weird, greenish brown. But anyways, I I, I realize you're having fun with this, but I need to use the chair too. I've got work to, honey. I've got work to. But that's fine. Why don't we go ahead and get? Don't joke about the kingdom. You need to. You need to feast. You need to eat some food. So he's gonna go ahead. Uh, ignore Bricklayer Cho, and he's gonna go eat something. You know what? We got quite a few mushrooms last time because we needed a whole lot of ingredients to make some stew. And oh, are they in a relationship? Praxian, are you okay? <laughs> Praxian, Praxian, what are you doing, boy? Praxian, stop, stop. Let me help you. Go over there. There we go. And then let's go make some food. What the heck was happening with him? <laughs> ah, I guess all this cruelty is getting to his head. His good heart, is, his strings are being tugged. Muscles ripped apart. <laughs> okay, well, then again, the hugs in medieval. Okay, now this guy's having the same problem. Jeez, jeez, okay, my eyes are getting a seizure. We need to go over to this side. Uh, he's gonna go grab some food and then as soon as he's done he needs he's got energy and we've got the day so he needs to start working on this trick as soon as possible maybe Dana's gonna do a better job oh Dana's about to oh, Dana's gonna interrogate her hey Dana can you do a good job please because I absolutely suck and I couldn't do it so uh, yeah I have no clue how to work this but I'm assuming we just need to keep using no 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 put that back down boy Eat that. There we go. We're gonna eat that. Don't throw that away. That's precious food. But what is this? I am thinking that we need to persuade. Like, how do you persuade her, though? How do you persuade her? There, there was one option that was sway. I think sway. That's what we need to do because everything else kind of just makes a thing go down. And I think that's the only option I have of making her comply with us. So he's done eating. Let's see if he can take over. Can he take over? Uh, well, lock up Sim. Let's, uh... Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, geez. Uh, where is she? It's Hadley, right? Imagine Hadley? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, please, Dana, Dana, please stop. I need to use this contraption. I have church work to do. Okay. There we go. She's having too much fun with this. Attendant Dana, you're having too much fun. Go and do something for the Watcher. <laughs> go and do something for the Watcher, please, woman. We, we need to be using this. Okay. Let's see how this works. Who knows? Maybe Dana's... I don't know what her personality is like, but maybe, maybe she's thought, Hey. You're absolutely terrible at this. Let me show you how this is done. Watch and learn, shall sir. Watch and learn. Okay. So we need to sway her enough times to get that little thing, the line, to go up to the golden thing, the yellow line. And I'm going to keep using sway because we literally can't use anything else. Anything else that I use or I did use in the past kind of just brings her the meter down so there we go this is gonna take a while but we're gonna have to do this I seriously don't know how the hell this is even gonna work because the alertness goes down and it doesn't seem as though swaying is making the will go any like go as up as I want it to so we'll continue let's hope it works if it doesn't then oh well I have no clue what the hell to do but right Come on, 
y you can do this. I'm kind of scared to rush all of this along, but we might have to rush just, just a little bit. Okay. Her alertness is going down heaps. Like, are we even going to get it up in time? Like, come on. What is this? Yeah, we're not gonna... I don't know how to do this, guys. If you know, then please let me know because I have absolutely no clue. What the hell do I do to bring it up there? Because everything else I use, it's just bringing it down. I don't get it. We'll keep spraying and see if we reach the... Although I highly doubt it. I don't think we will. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, watch. The alertness is gonna go down. And we're not gonna be able to make it. We're not gonna make it! I'm telling you, we've got one more left. We are absolutely not gonna make it. It's just not gonna work. Oh, this is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm. It's not gonna work. No, 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 no. I don't want to. We're releasing her? I don't want to re Oh, jeez. Well, her alertness is down, so I can't release it at all. But that just took it up too far. See, now I don't even know what the hell to do. We're going to lock you up again. I'm going to try again. Actually, should we? Uh, I really do want to. We're going to have to rush this along just a little bit because we're spending too much time on this. I still haven't worked out this contraption. That is terribly embarrassing, but hey. Okay, sit down, woman. We got some business to work out. Okay, she's sitting down. Let's see what we can do. What does, uh, can we sway uh, show box? I don't think I've used Dow's. What does Dow's do? And then spray again. And then, uh, show box. And then spray again. I don't, I don't know. Ah. Oh, well, somehow it's working. Spray. Let's Dow's again. <laughs> Okay, we might just make it. We might just make it, guys. What is this? So do I have to... Oh, jeez. <laughs> do I have to change between... Okay, let's spray one more time. And maybe this is going to do the trick. Maybe this is so difficult. Maybe this is going to do the trick. Maybe I was just supposed to switch between spraying and something else. And not to a whole bunch of, you know... Come, please, please, please. Ah, uh, yes. Can we interrogate her? How the hell do we... How the hell do we interrogate? Goodness Christ. What is this? Um, bring it to the yellow bar to interrogate them. But it's already up to the yellow flipping bar. How do I interrogate? I don't want to bring it up anymore. Ah, persuade. There we go. I worked it out, everyone. I have worked it out. I know how it's done now. So, instead of using one thing, we had to switch between the two. Ah, so it's like a bit of torture, persuasion. A bit of torture, then persuasion. And finally, it's worked out. Okay, okay. All right, all right. You've convinced me. Take this ripped treasure map I've been piecing together. Okay, see? That wasn't too hard, now was it? Not too hard at all. So, she's all fine and well. She's about to leave. We finished that. Oh, geez, we need to draft a pro pirate proclamation. This war is a terrible thing. Advice directly from the watcher should encourage people to help pick sides correctly. Pro pirate? Yes. Yes. I like pro pirate. Good on you, Praxian. I'm proud of you. I'm glad that just because you're part of the Jacobin church doesn't mean you're going to side with the Tredonians because they're rich or anything. And speaking of changes to the castle, or I mean to the church, cathedral, yeah. I went ahead and put a spyglass over there, just like this birdcage, because spyglass, kind of like a gift from some nobility, probably a Tredonian, who knows? But looks as though he's not swayed by those Tredonians. Okay, let's deliver secret war info to monarchy. Ooh. Once the advisor receives this intel, it will be spread to all necessary parties in Sandusk. Ah, that's quite interesting, especially because in the monastery, we don't actually meddle in any of the politics, but it seems as though the Jacobians quite blatantly, uh, you know, uh, delve in politics and uh, busy themselves with political affairs, which is quite interesting. But he's going to make his way over to the castle and let the advisor know that we have discovered some war secrets. 
which hopefully should help out the kingdom of sand dust and give us an advantage over others. Right? Right in the doorway where I can barely see you. Okay, hey, woman, come back. Oh, and honey, attendant Dana, what are you doing here? I think Dana's over here because she probably has some secrets too that... Ooh, hey, hey, no. I think Dana's here because she's got some secrets too that she probably wants to share with someone. Yeah, that's that's my guess. Anyways, we gotta go and we gotta post a pro pirate proclamation. Right, okay, so where the hell do I post this? Oh, oh, oh! Is this back at the little thing that we have? And then probably go to sleep and work on the forest thing tomorrow. But, ah, that's quite fascinating. That little board that we have in front of the church that I don't really do anything with because I didn't know what to do. But this thing here, there we go, post pirate proclamation. This is kind of exciting. Let's see how this works out. Oh, I, I love this. This is so cool. Okay. They kind of delve in all sorts of things. A little bit of spying, a little bit of interrogation, a little bit of this, you know, the, the torturer's work. And um, some of the priestly works too. Okay. Oh, damn, that looks so cool. Fear of the Jacobin Order has increased slightly. People are unafraid and would rather sleep in than attend church services. <laughs> okay. The Watcher loves all pirates and banishes those who wish harm upon them to the unmentionable realm in the afterlife for all of eternity. Consider this fair warning to all. Damn. That looks so flippin' cool. I love it. Oh, that's so cool. Because we don't have... That's a Jacobian thing. A Jacobin thing because we don't have that back at the... Um, yeah, let's go home. We don't have that at the Peterin Monastery. Okay, he is gonna go off to sleep now. And then when he wakes up in the morning, do the do, eat his breakfast, and then head off straight for the forest to set the boar stews there. Hopefully, hopefully they're not rotten by now, because I don't, I don't doubt they, they could be. But uh, bag, a bag of boar stews, okay. Who knows? Maybe the more rotten they are, the better the chinchillas like them. I mean, I don't know their tastes. I don't know what sort of things that they like eating, so we'll have to see how that works out. Alright, okay. No one's at the cathedral? Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes plenty of sense, actually. Okay. 4, not 4 a.m. 6 a.m. is almost here. And then as soon as it is, we shall head off. Actually, after we have our breakfast. What? What's this? As Shepherd Praxian slept, nascent feelings of comfort and happiness began to solidify into a beautiful dream. In the distance, soft music was carried on a fragrant spring breeze, and smiling faces cheered his approach. Praxian could see a shining golden road leading towards a breathtaking paradise. In the opposite direction, the road faded to a thick mist, though Praxian could almost make out a dark and still bedchamber, mm -hmm. barely visible through the fog. Embraced joy, it appeared that the dream had something to say. Shepherd Praxin would allow himself to be swept along by the cheering throng towards the vision of paradise. What would come, would come. Or control dream. The dream seemed to be offering paradise to Shepherd Praxin, but was this not the product of his own mind? He could seize control of the dream and take paradise. I think he would embrace joy. He's not a very manipulative or power-hungry sort of person, so we'll go ahead and get him to do that. Shepherd Praxian joined the cheering crowd of familiar faces and was carried steadily towards the vision of paradise. Before Praxian knew it, bliss surrounded him like a warm, secure blanket. A hundred beautiful scenes, each filled a thousand precious moments, paraded across his senses. Within every second, a lifetime was lived in joy and cheer, each iteration greater than the last. Oh, that's a beautiful dream for someone to start off their day with. Let's make some food. I would love it if I had a dream like that. Then again, I have, I've had some pretty cool dreams. To be honest, I have a lot of crazy dreams, guys. I go on weird adventures, see weird things. Sometimes I'm, like, in weird TV shows. It's, it's just weird. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. I, I almost never have normal dreams with people I know from real life. Even if I do, it's really crazy and far-fetched. And I can tell that I'm in a dream um, because of how stupid it is. But okay, he's going to make himself some breakfast. Right, and eat that up. Wonderful! Now we can head off for the forest. So let's go to the location. And off we go, sir. Off we go. Hopefully everyone's oop, doing fine, wherever they are. Right at the forest. Thank you. Nope, we do not wish to learn any more about stocks. We want to set the boar stews and see what happens here, because I kind of want to make some progress with this quest before we end off this season of The Sims Medieval. But okay, let's go on and see what happens, what he gets up to. 
I'm gonna rush this on just a little bit. Okay, right, and let's see what happened. Come on, what happened next? You did finish it, right? Well, the interaction's not completely done. I guess he has to be out of the forest completely. Okay, okay. You're done? Oh! And that was it? That was it? Oh! Well, okay, guys. Shepherd Praxian let out a relieved sigh. The dire chinchillas have been eaten the fill or moving on to new hunting grounds. Sandusk was safe for now and the creatures would be safe. No one important got hurt. Oh, that's cool. Well, we got some money. Jacobin Priest level 2. Security and culture, which is pretty cool. And now we gotta go pick a new quest, guys. So that's pretty cool. I guess before we end off this season, we're gonna go pick a new quest and see what happens there. Or, alternatively, we can go and end off the season by making a brand new hero, so like a whole new hero. Um, maybe we should go ahead and make a whole new hero. I think we should. I mean, we've played with the Monarch, we've played with the Knight, we've played with the Peter and Priest, and we've played with Jacobin Cathedral. Um, we could get... Um, let's see. We could get a Bard. We could get a merchant, and okay, we could get a smithy. We could get um, a clinic. We could get a wizard's tower and spy quarters. So we've got one, two, three, uh, three, four, five, six. So we've got six heroes left. Huh. I kind of want to get a bard. Why would we need a bard? I kind of want to get a bard, though, to be honest. Would we have a male bard or a female bard? I don't actually know. Um, a female bard or a male bard? We already have a male. A female bard, I guess, would do? Or a male bard? I feel like maybe we should have a male bard. I, that's, I guess that's kind of something that's typical, but who knows, maybe we could come up with a really cool male bard. Hmm. Or we should have a female one. I think female would be cooler. Okay, this would give us more well-being, more culture, and then more knowledge space, which we need more well-being and we need more knowledge space, to be honest. So maybe it is a good move for us to do that. So let's see. The tavern plays host to the favorite adult recreation of the kingdom, drinking. Hard times call for hard drinks and rousing entertainment, whether it be melodious music from a lute or a clever comedy from the stage. So we'll get a tavern furnished, wonderful. That's gonna help us, hopefully. And let's go ahead and plop in a new bard. So we're going to make a whole new bard all for ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and probably have the bard be female because that is personally what I'm feeling. Also, I have been actually going and alternating between the heroes, if you guys have noticed. So I kind of want to do a female now. Right, so let's go a female. Oh, she looks interesting. Let's randomize. This is how we do this. We randomize until I find a hero that I feel like I resonate with or I like and then we go from there. So let's see. Ah, uh, she's kind of cool to be honest. She's unique. Yeah, she is kind of unique. Like a very odd looking bod, but she's kind of cool at the same time. She's kind of cool. I kind of like her. Yeah, I kind of like her. Okay, obviously we have a different hair for her because this ain't gonna do, but I'm thinking, she's kind of like a jester bud. Um, Aparuta Goldrain. Yeah, that's a cool name. I like it. So, Aparuta, Aparuta Goldrain. Goldrain, mm. That's a lovely name. I like, I like. Okay, we need to go ahead and change up her hair a little bit because I don't really like what she has. It's a bit odd. Mm. This is kind of cool. This is not the best looking thing we've got going on in the world, but it kind of looks cool. She's a very odd looking bot, to be quite honest with you guys. Mm, this is also kind of fascinating, I guess. This, uh, I'm not feeling it too much. Doesn't our, what does, okay, now I can't even remember what our priestess has, to be honest. Don't really remember. This is kind of interesting. It's short, not something I'd normally have, but I don't know, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I'll leave it there for now and let's see her outfits, what she's got going on there. So 
So she's got quite a few options that she could choose from, to be honest. But ah, I kind of see her as a scandalous sort of, sort of um, bard. A little bit scandalous. I guess I did say she seemed more jovial and silly, but I kind of wanted to be scandalous. Like, look at that. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, like a bard from a foreign land that we don't really. Um, yeah, that kind of looks cool. She's a bard from a foreign land that, uh, uh, who knows? I'm not gonna come up with a story just yet, but I do like the way she looks. She looks really cool. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna do a personality. So I'm gonna randomize her personality and see what happens from there. If I don't like something, I don't feel like it fits her character, I'm gonna change it. But once we get her traits, uh, then I'll start creating a story and see uh, what kind of personality she is and who she has. Um, what? what kind of, who she is and what kind of personality she has is what I meant. But I already have something brewing in my mind about her. Um, but we'll, in terms of our looks and how that relates to our history, but we'll have to see in terms of traits. So let's randomize. We got excitable, <laughs> see I knew it. Excitable, vain. Oh, okay. And guild enemy. Oh. Well, that kind of sucks. But vain. Vain, vain, vain. I can see her being vain, as in she thinks that her body is the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, which is why she wears the sort of tough but kind of exposing clothing that she does. And excitable, obviously, if you're going to be a bard, that's something you need. You know, you need to be excitable. And I guess she's a little bit vain with that. But um, I do feel as though sometimes, like, she appears a little bit serious. And um, because of how she dresses and a little bit strong, so people might get a bit off put by that and not exactly give her a chance as a bard. So I kind of, I kind of see that sort of thing, and I really like how that's going. But I don't want a guild enemy, especially if we're gonna have to buy things. I don't want to make life any more terrible than it is. And not glutton. I've played with glutton once before, and it was absolutely terrible. Um, scatterbrained, lacking common sense, easily distracted, and often get lost. Do we want to be a fool? I don't think so. Drunkard. We do have a drunkard in the queen. Cursed? Oh. You know what? I kind of see her as cursed though. She's vain, excitable, and cursed. So that could be one of the reasons why she doesn't get a chance or people don't give her a chance to go ahead and do, you know, her best as a bard or try and make her way in life as a bard because that part of that just happens to be because she's cursed. So, you know what? That's quite interesting. Welcome to the collection, our collection of heroes, I put a gold drain. And guys, I think this is an awesome way to end off this series, or not this series as a whole, but this season of The Sims Medieval. And with that, I'm gonna go off and end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next season, whenever that happens to be. Thank you so much, and uh, bye.